Hey, Dustin Vanoy here. Databricks recently announced a VS Code integration, Visual Studio Code integration uh, via a blog post. And so I wanted to walk through real quick just sort of how we set that up and just a quick test so you can see sort of the way you would use a notebook file locally and the way you would run just a Python uh, PySpark file locally using this integration. So here we go. Uh, first, you could check through the blog post and see uh, a bit more information about it. I'm not going to try and cover um, <clears throat> too much background. I have in the past talked about Databricks Connect, which was a way to work from your IDE with Databricks and from your local machine with Databricks pretty uh, smoothly, I felt. And there's some different tools available now. Maybe I'll cover more of those in the, in the future. But if you look around at DBX, that's another possibility to work remotely uh, from your local environment with Databricks. But this is great for people that use Visual Studio Code, which quite a few developers out there do, especially um, those I work with and talk to a lot in the Azure environment that are used to, used to program with Microsoft uh, ecosystem of tools. So let's take a look at um, where, how we get going with this. So you can go to the, the actual web page for it, or what I typically do is I open up Visual Studio Code and I go and I click on the integration icon here. Uh, once I click there, I can search for what I want and pull up Databricks. As you look through the list, you should see uh, a few different options. We're looking for the one that is by Databricks, and it's uh, this specific integration for Visual Studio Code and Databricks uh, for PySpark type workloads. So here in the search results, it's the third one down that we're actually looking for, though the SQL tools one's pretty cool too. It's a different topic though. So Databricks for Visual Studio Code, I click install. You may see some different things pop up depending on what you've already have configured and installed. Uh, for me, I've done this once already and uninstalled, and so it comes up pretty easily and quickly for me. Um, and so um, what I want you to see, though, is that uh, we can jump into basically the quick start or the configuration tab. And I'll walk you through how I do the con how I did the configuration and what my experience was. So first, when you go to configure, you'll need to put the host name in. And so for Azure Databricks, you'll find that uh, here in the, the URL, everything from HTTPS till this uh, .NET piece. And we'll, we'll plug that in to the configure Databricks option. Uh, and then the next step will be to make sure we're authenticated. And so I authenticate with AZ login. I think this is your best option to make sure you have as secure an environment as you can. Using a Databricks token is also fine. Just make sure you're careful with where you save that token to and where it's available in clear text. Um, so I would go to AZ login. If you don't have the AZ CLI, I go and see the Microsoft uh, Learn documentation to get that installed. Once that's set up, go ahead and do your login through AZ Login. That should probably take you to this browser window to connect and get everything set up. And then from there, you can jump back to Visual Studio Code and you should be authenticated and ready to move forward. Note that in their uh, guide, they have a bit of information about what's required uh, for your cluster environment to work and, and how to get things going here. So this is kind of a quick Look at the docs, and I'll, sh I'll show you my experience, which is you know similar, of course, to what the documentation says. Uh, so here in the configuration, I can see that it it knows my host now. It has me authenticated. It's looking for a cluster that I haven't attached one yet. So um, this gear icon is a way to do it, and uh, it shows me a list of clusters on this host, and I can go ahead and choose one there. Um, now I'm going to see it syncing. Uh, not sure how long it'll take for you. Just kind of give it a moment. And it should pop up with some information about that cluster. Uh, if you don't have that cluster started, you have an option to kick it off from this configuration tab. Uh, you could also go to the UI and start it there. So here, after I chose my cluster, I uh, see it syncing there. Uh, and then where I'm at, I guess I didn't explain this yet. I have a repository here that's actually a repository that's connected to my Databricks workspace that I'm working with here. And so I can go ahead and pull something up that's part of that repo. Um, the cool thing is I can do changes here. I can commit it and push it from Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio Code, and I can get it uh, available up in the Databricks repo that's attached to the workspace for anyone that's only working from the workspace and not working from the IDE. Really what I want to do for you, though, is grab a couple of test scripts and show you just very simple. Here's what it looks like to run a notebook. Here's what it looks like to run a PySpark script. So here I am in test2.py, one of my scripts that I've created. It's doing a simple Spark read from a file that I mounted on my workspace and doing a show. And so when I kick that off, I have this option to uh, run on Databricks. And so I chose that option here. And you can see it does some things in the terminal. And then it, uh, if it's working correctly, which most of the time it has for me, uh, this is pretty new. And so keep an eye out for anything where it loses connectivity. But 
uh, I jump over and I see in the debug console, it has my print um, out there and I can uh, view what I printed, view what I did with the df.show. Okay, so that's there. If I make a change to, in this case, just which file I'm reading and I click save um, and run it again, what you'll see if you look very closely, it'll be the same type of experience, but the data printed out and the show is a bit different. I've got different columns here um, than what I just ran before. And so this hasn't been committed. It hasn't been pushed up to the workspace. It's being, you know, the new code that I save locally is being passed to the workspace as I run. Additional thing to know is that if I try to take this PySpark script I have and run it as a workflow, it will work. A workflow in Databricks, if you're not familiar, it's a way of uh, coordinating jobs. And so I can, it's basically going to run a one-time uh, job up on the Databricks cluster for me using this code. And then it does show me some of the results uh, down here once it's completed. Um, so that's that's another way you can run PySpark code if you prefer to go in the workflow route versus the interactive route that I did before where um, all the results just came straight back to me and they're not really trackable as much on the cluster besides in the Spark UI. Okay, so let's take a look at a notebook that I use. So this PySpark script didn't have anything special at the top. It's just a typical PySpark script I could run locally with no problems. Let's look at one that's actually a notebook. So if I go into test.py, that's a very similar type of script. Instead of show, I'm using display, and I'm um, going to read in the data. Um, but you'll notice the comment at the top, which indicates this is a notebook file that uh, has some spe spe specific syntax with it to um, render properly and look good as a notebook in the Databricks environment. So what's it look like to run this locally? If I try run file, um, I'm going to get a message that lets me know if it's a notebook, you need to use the workflow setting. So you don't really have an option running notebooks locally. Um, you would need to run it as a workflow, which uh, seems fine to me. I haven't looked into yet why that's the case, but um, when I run that, it's going to be a similar experience to when I ran my PySpark as a workflow. Um, so let me zoom in a little bit to what this looks like. We can see the results. Okay, so there we have the results and you'll notice that it says it's fetching the results here, which um, takes some time and I'm not sure if it's going to come back with all that stuff I printed out and rendered in the notebook, but I can click this task link. That's really what I would recommend you do if you're going to display things that are that are critical there. Click the task link, it'll jump you out to the notebook run view, which is going to be a lot cleaner looking um, and, and quicker to respond for you. So that's, that's really the gist of it. Um, from there, I can use my uh, Git get plugins within VS Code or go to my command line and commit these two changes, or really there's just one change in this case, commit that change, push it up, and then now it's available both in GitHub, uh, in, my, in my local, of course, where I made the changes to begin with. And for anyone that's working from the Databricks workspace using repos, they would see those changes on my branch as well. So that's really um, the main thing I wanted to point out, that this is the simple steps to get it set up, get working with it, and just kind of the quick intro to how it works. Hope that's helpful for you. Um, definitely feel free to leave comments, links to other helpful information if you go you go deeper with this and want to help people out. Um, I probably can't help troubleshoot everything that happens on install, but I certainly will look out for anything that you that you ask and see if I can point you to the right resources to get help there. All right, see you next time.